Hello and welcome back to episode 136 of Talk of Fame Podcast with your host, Kai Martini. I'm super excited to have on singer-songwriter Dominic Lyle. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So you started your performing career as, as an actor with the age of eight and have dedicated yourself to your art, developing your passion for pop music and no so under tunes. Like how did you find your passion for performing? So it really all started since I was born. My I grew up in a musical family. My mom plays the flute. My dad plays the oboe. My grandma is an opera singer. My aunt plays the piano and sings. It it like it's everywhere in my family. Um, and I started um, with music when I was five, but really took it seriously around the age of eight. Um, same with acting. And um, yeah, it kind of just kicked off um, with acting. I did it for about two and a half to three years. And I realized that I really just want to focus more on music and, you know, take that path um, instead of acting. But mm-hmm. the time that I spent acting was super fun. Mm-hmm. And guys, you, know, you came from a family of musicians. Like, how did it kind of impact you to pursue music and stuff? Because, like, I know it for me, like, I come a family journalist, and so like, it's like all, always kind of safe in your blood. And you knew, like, yeah. from a family of that, you basically know you're probably going to do what you, you when you get older, since you come from a family yeah. of musicians and stuff. Yeah. Well, living in a family of musicians, um. You, like I have a brother and he he loves music he doesn't do it as like professionally as me but um even like not doing it professionally he loves music he's such an amazing singer and I feel like everybody prof- like in our family professional or not like they're in music in like a, in a certain way um and yeah living in a musical family is super great because you just get like inspired by everyone around you like specifically my grandma she's uh, is an opera singer and her vocal techniques and her um, range is just amazing and it's really inspiring so mm-hmm. I love being in this family mm-hmm. like did you ever see like your grandmother perform or like you like um so right now she's retired and she's a um opera singer um opera coach in Romania at one of the colleges there but I've seen a few videos of her performing and she was really really good in her like when she was doing that yeah it's amazing like, did she ever like teach you like things from music yeah so you? actually um <laughs> she just um flew in about four weeks ago and she just flew back to Romania f- and she stayed for three weeks and during those three weeks we really just like kicked it off and like we're working every single day for like at a minimum of like an hour and we were um I was just learning a lot from her and every time she's here, I'm really just like learning more and more and new things from her. And I'm really, really like glad she's in my family because she like gives me a lot of advice and like very good like technique on how to stay, you know, healthy, like keep your voice healthy while singing. Mm-hmm. Like how do, like, do you keep your voice healthy? Because I know like you sing a lot and obviously and obviously putting out music you've been yeah. doing this since you're a kid like for me like if I sing too much or even mm-hmm. like scream at the top of my lungs my yeah. voice always like blows out like mm-hmm. it's yeah like, I can't even like I lose my voice like for like weeks and at a time well it's really just about technique because if you have if you're just like screaming then obviously it's going to go straight to your vocal cords Mm because I've gone to concerts and I'll be like screaming my ass off and then the next day I can't even speak Mm -hmm. but with singing if you do really really high notes and you stay in your body and you stay grounded use your diaphragm and you know have the right air have the right like like habits um it honestly I've, I've been doing classes with her for like hours like four hours on and and I won't even feel tired like my voice doesn't even feel it so if you have that right technique, you you don't even feel it. Mm-hmm. And like in terms of music and writing songs and stuff, mm-hmm. last year it came out with a single called Sunflower. Like what was yeah. like, the meaning behind that song? So Sunflower was really the idea behind it when we started it was kind of this almost like imagination of this perfect person, mm-hmm. yet not really being there in a way 
So like having this idea of, you know, like a your soulmate or like your, like a loved one. And, you know, in reality, they're not actually there. That was kind of the idea when we started writing the song. Um, and ever since that song has been one of my most popular ones. I love that song a lot. Um, and yeah. Like, like, did you like, was it just all your imagination or did you like kind of feel that um, way, like, growing up or just so, now, like, did you feel that? Yeah, I can, it was like when we first wrote it, I, it was kind of imagination, but since I've like grown older, since I wrote that song, like, I feel like I've had moments in my life where like, I feel like that. Mm -hmm. like I feel like everyone feels like that you're like you just mm -hmm. kind of like think like oh my god these things are gonna happen like I'm gonna yeah. have like love my life but then like this do those things don't happen and just like it just brings yeah. a gut out of you like this pride mm -hmm. kind of brings sadness in you because like yeah. you're like I wish this thing will happen like why can yeah. I get this thing to happen you know exactly and like how is like Sunflower different from like your other songs like what is it kind of like the best about it so my before sunflower i had released four songs original songs prior one was called friends for the weekend and i when i got that song i like didn't necessarily write a whole lot of it um but that was essentially my first ever original song then i released my ep with colors sad and love again and those three songs, Colors was, I wrote those three songs like around quarantine time, right when COVID hit. And Colors was really almost speaking about like how quarantine affected everybody, mm -hmm. how like everybody's in their houses all the time. A lot of people got like a lot of anxiety, antisocial. And the song was really saying that how the world is like just bright and then sad was being sad in quarantine and love again was really the first love song that I wrote but um again I also used that one over um imagination because I hadn't really had like a deep love like life yet mm -hmm. um so that one was really like through imagination but um sunflower was you know although it was imagination it was like that's kind of when I was starting to get you more, you know, more into like my love life. And um, I felt a little bit more of a connection with it compared to all my other songs. Cause I felt like more like, I don't know, part of it. Mm -hmm. And like, well, I got a lot of like those like other songs like connections, like with quarantine, I know a lot of people suffer mm -hmm. with anxiety. Like yeah. I have suffer with anxiety. Everyone has kind of took everybody. COVID like different like I know that yeah. a lot of people suffer anxiety and be everyone's like at home like for months is coming into the third year which is crazy yeah. to me like it's already the third year I honestly thought like it would last a couple of weeks personally I know yeah I mean when I was in quarantine my school said that hey it's just gonna be two weeks no mm -hmm. worries yada 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 um and then it turned out to be you know a few years and like I felt like over the summer last year was finally when people were like, you know, getting a little bit like more comfortable with going outside. Um, and but yeah, those first like that first year and a half to two years was like super depressing for everybody because not only were you stuck inside, but you couldn't like go see friends. You weren't socializing. It was mm -hmm. like it's fun for a little bit because you're in the house, you do whatever you want. But after even the first few months it got uh, it just killed everybody in my household at least yeah it can be too like at first like the first couple of weeks I got so excited I'm like Ooh, oh I yeah just get lazy and just watch television yeah I thought it was gonna be like a two-week vacation and then turned out to be more like two years <laughs> I know <laughs> like how did that like impact you like I know like for a lot of artists like it kind of impacted like writing a lot like a yeah. person like how like I know for me like for quarantine like I wouldn't be doing this podcast or and my yeah. work if it wasn't for quarantine but like yeah. how did that kind of impact you as an artist so, yeah so going back to my EP that I released back in like 2021 um those three songs were all really inspired 
during quarantine and colors was the first one i wrote and um that was after about like a month and a half of quarantine um and that it really just like generated from people being you know so negative after the first few months and um you know bringing awareness that like there's still life outside mm -hmm. so um and then sad was after about like four months to five months of quarantine which is when it finally like the depression hit and you know the feeling like lonely and like you know secluded with just your family members um really really hit and that's what sad was you know based on um and then love again was like wrote around like december so about like what six seven months after everything hit um and yeah i i feel like quarantine definitely was super inspiring and i wouldn't be doing this without quarantine and i wouldn't have been able to release that ep without quarantine not only for the inspiration behind it but you know with like you have you had so much free time and like you had so much like freedom to do kind of whatever you wanted for the first like few months and that's kind of what like drove this because we had the time and you know the energy to kind of do it mm -hmm. and like with music like I know a lot of people have so many goals and like and, like things mm -hmm. they want to accomplish in the next couple of years I know you're young I know you're just yeah. kind of like starting out and everything like what is like your like number one goal with your music that yeah music so like. ever when I was younger I would always tell people I want to get a Grammy by the time I'm 16 and then now that I'm older I realize that's not how the world works so um I'd say one of my biggest dreams and aspirations is for sure to get a Grammy. I don't know by 16, but um, definitely to do that. I want to, like, by the time I, like, get into my adulthood, like, 20s and 30s, I want to, like, just, like, blow off and, like, just go crazy with my music and be able to, you know, like, sell, like, I sell at stadiums, be able to, like, have songs hit number one and just you know get all those crazy things but um all those things don't come out with don't come without work so that's what we're doing right now <laughs> working working yeah, mom that's honestly it's a great goal like honestly yeah. like, i wish like i had your goals like honestly <laughs> like i have so many about i'm like oh where, where do yeah, i want I... my mind to you know like, <laughs> like where do i want to achieve in like this upcoming year like what do i want to do like honestly yeah. like with having a grammy like that was honestly a good goal to have yeah. by 16 i i love like man <laughs> when i was five that was that was the dream um and man it still is i would love to get a grammy by 16 it would that would be that'd be something else huh <laughs> <laughs> for sure but, uh, if i want to grammy by 16 i wouldn't want to live life anymore like i'd be like i know i know that's yeah it's it's funny because i look at like people and i've always been told that like if you don't um like make it in the music industry by like 16 to 18 you're not gonna have any chances in the music industry and then I look at people like in today's world that are like just making it and they're in their like, like they're like 28 mm -hmm. like I feel like it's good to like start a career early but like doesn't really like matter that much yeah like I know like I know like some people like kind of start young but like some like big artists like Tana McGraw, like I, like I forget, I don't know how to say your last name, but yeah. like, um, she like started like in her like twenties, I mm -hmm. think. Like yeah. the most artists usually like get big, um, usually in the twenties or early thirties, even yeah. if they started really young. Yeah. And like, do you have like any upcoming music this year? Like, I like you have any music releases coming? So right now, my plan is to release an album soon that's the that's the plan and i've been writing a lot of songs behind the behind the screen um and a few of them i've performed live so if um you ever like look on instagram you'll definitely see them and um yeah i'm definitely going to re be releasing some singles soon um but 
the goal is by in the next year to release an album sweet and like like do you have like a goal how many songs like you want to have on the album or on is the it album, like i want to have a minimum of 10 but like i would say the happy medium is like 12 13 no oh. Yeah. Okay. Like, honestly, like, I know, like, a lot of artists, like, come out, like, a, a couple of songs, but I know Morgan Wallen, like, came out, like, a 36-song album, I think. Oh, yeah. There's some people that, like, come out with, like, crazy numbers on albums. But, um, like, The Kid Leroy came out with an album. It was funny because it came out with, like, 50-something songs, but the album was only, like, 25 minutes long. So each song was, like, a minute long. It was kind of Oh, weird. really? But, yeah. Oh wow! I had I didn't even know that. Like with Morgan <laughs> like every all the songs are like two to three minutes, I think. Yeah, it's like which is like crazy. We all songs are one minute, and all of it takes twenty two minutes. Like that's yeah, that's insane. yeah. There were some songs on that album that were like even like thirty seconds long. It was like kind of just like little snippets of things. Like he could have just like put it all in together and make like a few really long songs, but. Oh. Never yeah, mind. that's absolutely <laughs> true. Like some artists kind of like to kind like, of have snippets or like a minute or two songs that he wants yeah. the album like that like to listen mm -hmm. to get like more listeners, I feel. Yeah. He gets more and, views. Yeah. And like I want the final thing I have to ask you is like what is like some advice for upcoming singer-songwriters? Mm -hmm. Um, I would just say don't ever stop like trying your hardest because there are a lot especially in the music industry there you will get a lot of no's mm -hmm. um but just keep on trying keep on just putting in the work and you know keep on pushing mm -hmm. like how do you like, find the motivation to keep doing what you're doing because obviously like for me like it's obvious like it's so hard to find motivation like at some point during my career, I know I've been doing this for almost two years, but it's like sometimes you're like, oh my God, I, I'm doing this every single day. I need a break. Like, I can't yeah. have a motivation. Yeah, I, I, breaks are always good. Like you need to know when to like give yourself those breaks. Um, But I would say for the past few years, my, mo my main motivation has been the people around me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, keep on, that keep on push me. And from a good place. Um, but recently I've learned to, to just kind of like push away all the negativity and focus on myself. So recently, my main motivation has been myself, like knowing that I'm doing this for me. And if I do this, it will get me somewhere good. Mm -hmm. Like, that's honestly a good motivation. It's, like, mm -hmm. obviously, you're doing it for yourself, but if, like, if you, like, work your butt off, like, to, like, to an extent, and you think, like, oh, my God, I need a break, but this thing, like, you're just doing it for yourself. Like, if you work hard every single day or every other day or how many times you work during a week, um, it's just going to go far. Like, it just no yeah. matter how long it works. So I'm, like, most nights during the week, I literally go to bed brain dead. Like, I literally can't, like, think anymore. Like I feel that. I've been going, like, a few nights ago, I was up staying, like, just doing music until, like, 1.30 at night. And I had to wake up the next morning at 7.30 to go to school. And I was just so exhausted. But, um, hey, the stuff I came up with at 1 a.m. were fire. So it was worth it. Yeah, it is definitely worth it. Like I was literally up until like two thirty in the morning today because I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm like, I want to like come up with ideas. Like it's always, like I swear, all ideas come at night when you're trying to go. Yeah, to bed. all ideas are just come like right when you're trying to go to bed. You get all those like pops in your brain, and then you're like, no, I can't sleep. Yeah, like it's like stinks. Like, you know, like I'm like, I want to wait till next morning to write it down, but then the next morning when I wake up, I forget it. Like that's yeah. like, absolutely the worst feeling. And like if, when you're coming yeah. up with stinks on the day, you can't think of anything. That course at night when your brain's like shutting off, like you're mm -hmm. like, what yeah. am I supposed to do now? And it's funny because those ideas that I get like randomly at the middle of the night, right before I go to bed, give me the energy to just stay up and mm -hmm. work on those ideas. Because like. I'm like by the time I am so like I'm dead I've had a long day of school I came home I do all my work I got my homework done and then I'm trying to go to bed and then all, this idea pops up and that kind of gives me the energy to just like stay up and work on it 
Mm -hmm. like that's absolutely true like that's like the worst thing about being an artist or being in Mm -hmm. entertainment is that like you like obviously come up with many ideas but can't come up but during the day like when you're trying to do get work done things on like schoolwork like your schoolwork takes up about like 97 percent of my time so i'm like of course it comes up when i'm trying to focus on my main thing is school like i'm Mm -hmm. like trying to focus on that then work pops in my head i need to do that instead of school yeah exactly and like I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really, I really me. appreciate it. And like, where can people follow you on social media if they want to connect with you? So you can find me at D O M I N I Q U E I L I E on almost all pro- platforms on TikTok, Instagram, Spotify, all streaming platforms, YouTube. Um, those are that's my main link. So yeah. perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining and thank you everyone for listening. Make sure to rate and review and check him out. I really recommend. And yeah, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. It was so fun to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.